In the previous video, we have ensured that we can stop our tasks from running when we stop our game in the inspector. What we will want to do now is go to our scripts and we have this world class and it contains a lot of code about the rendering of the chunks and we are currently facing an issue where our chunks are disabled but not reused so we are basically creating an infinite amount of chunks. What I would like to do is create a separate script that will take care of removing the old chunks or rather reusing them to create new chunks in our world. So let's right click in the scripts folder, create a new C -sharp script, I'll call it world renderer. And instead of opening it up, we are going to open our world script. Okay. Now let's create at the top a public world render world render reference. Great. Now when we have access to it, we are going to call in our generate world when we are actually when we are calling the create uh, chunk creation coroutine. We are here. Uh, let's right click and go to the definition. We are here calling this create chunk method and this create chunk takes world data the position and the mesh data and in this create ch chunk method in turn we are doing the creation of the chunk now i do not want to do this here instead i would like to receive this chunk render equals and we are going to call actually it's coming this out we're going to e call it equals to world render dot render ch uh, chunk and we are going to pass here our world data so basically the same position and the mesh data and we are going to pass all of this to the world render and we are going to expect it to return to us the uh, chunk uh, render so let's right click on this render chunk method quick actions and generate it inside our world renderer now what we can do is copy the content of this create chunk method and before I forget let's delete the initialize chunk and update chunk the only thing that we want to do here is add to our uh, dictionary the chunk render that we have received so actually we can delete the above statement as well okay so this is it now let's go to our render chunks right click and go to the definition for now let's paste what we had copied uh, in this method but we are going to start by creating our fields so let's remove our update and start methods and instead we're going to have a public game object chunk prefab so our world renderer now will have the chunk prefab and we are going to create public queue chunk render chunk pool which will be a new queue now the queue is a fifo structure so first in first out just like a real queue so what is the point here is that when we when we disable our chunk we are going to put it inside our chunk pool and then when we want to create a new chunk we are going to take this chunk that was disabled re-enable it and create it uh, using the new data that was passed to us the new the, the new mesh data okay so first thing that i want to have here is a method called clear just in case you want to implement a way to clear our world and because the world data struct was created inside our world as a, a class inside a class, we would need to call world.worldData. So what we can do is go back to our world script. We can find the definition of our world data. And let's remove it from this uh, inside of this class and let's put it outside of the world class. Now this is not a mono behavior, so it doesn't have to be in a separate script, but this way, when we save this world script and go back to world render, we can access this uh, world data without accessing the world class itself. Okay, great. So back to the clear method, we are going to access the world data and for each item in the world data chunk dictionary values, we are going to destroy all the chunks game objects and we are going to clear the chunk pool so that we have no more chunk objects. Now, since this is only a world render, we are going to focus on clearing the chunks, the, the chunk objects that are visible. Now, back to our current method, which is render chunk. Instead of throwing an exception, we are going to create chunk render new chunk equals null. Since we want to use an object pool pattern, 
we will want to reuse the chunks that are in our queue. Unless the queue is empty, then we will want to create a new chunk. To do this, all we need to do is create an if statement. If chunk full dot count is greater than zero, if it is so, we will want to be uh, we will be able to reuse some chunk. Else, we are going to create a new chunk. Now, if you want to learn more about object pooling uh, design pattern, basically, uh, there is a great uh, website, gameprogrammingpatterns.com object pools, and I will post it in the description of, of this video. So you can visit this website to learn about uh, the concept behind the object pool and why we want to do it and how it is connected to how uh, computers store memory. Anyways, let's go back to our Visual Studio. Okay, so. When we are in a if statement, when we have something in a chunk pool, we are going to call new chunk equals chunk pool dot dq. dq simply takes out one of the chunk render from the queue and removes it from the queue and returns it here. So this was exactly what we want to do. We do not want to reuse twice the same chunk render. And we are going to call new chunk dot transform dot position since we uh, we do not know where is this chunk render, uh, what is the, its position, we will want to set its position to be our new position, and that is it. Now, if not, we are going to take first line of code that we have copied from the previous script, and we are going to set new chunk to be, uh, actually, new object to be chunk object, instantiate chunk prefab position and quaternion.identity, and we are going to set new chunk uh, equals chunk object dot get component the chunk render and this is it basically we have now implemented our object pooling well not quite because when we are removing the chunks we will need to uh, fill in this chunk pool but we are close so now we can delete the last uh, the uh, two lines of code with this commented out line of code and we are left with chunk render instead we have this new chunk so we want to initialize it, calling initialize chunk, and we are going to pass the world data chunk data dictionary on this position, uh, and we are going to pass new chunk update chunk with the mesh data. And this is it. Now we want to return our new chunk. So we can add it to a dictionary inside our world script. And at the end, before we return our new chunk, let's make ensure that our new chunk dot set uh, game object dot set active and we are going to add true sorry about this and last thing that we will want to have is a way to remove our chunk uh, from our world so as you can see we are going to have a public void remove chunk that it will take chunk render chunk and we are going to set the game object to be not active so active to be false and we are going to enqueue our chunk to the chunk pool so that it can be reused great so of course now we can file and save all scripts and we will need to go back to our world script i have it open in visual studio and we are going to go up and find our generate world method and here we were removing some of those chunks so we were uh, generating the world and we were calling remove in this for each loop and we were removing the chunks and the chunk data now we are interested in the chunks, so let's go to our world data helper, remove chunk, go to the definition. Now in this method we were calling this remove chunk inside our world, which was simply setting this object to be false. We want to delete this method, and let's uh, go up again, and let's find where we are calling it, uh, world data helper, remove chunk, let's go to the definition again. This will have an error, because now, instead of calling world, Chunk, uh, remove chunk, we are going to call world dot world render dot remove chunk. So now this will use our object pool and our chunk world render instead of calling this set active inside our world and not using the object pool. Okay, so mostly this is it. Now, of course, we could uh, also implement our clear world method inside our UI, for example, to clear the world that we have generated. But for now, Let's save it, uh, file, save all, just in case, and let's go back to Unity. Okay, I can see that we have some errors because of our change to the where the world data is placed. So I'm going to click on the first one, and I can see that we now need to access our world data without the world dot. 
world data. Let's go back to Unity because I think we had one or two more errors. We can delete those by clicking on them in the inspector and removing the world dot before the world data definition. Okay, let's go back to our Unity and now it should all work. Okay, now all we need to do is create our world render. So let's right click in the inspector in the hierarchy, create world render. Or we can uh, put this inside our world object, doesn't matter. Let's add to it our world render script and let's assign our prefab. So I think we had this in the asset, this was the chunk prefab. Uh, if I think, yeah, this was the chunk prefab. And now we need to assign to our world the world render. Great. So now let's press play. We are going to generate our world and then we are going to select one of those chunks at one end of our world. Let me press Y axis to see this world from the top. And we are going to start moving to the other side of the world. And now, as you can see, yes, the chunk is visible. It was reused to create this part of the mountain. Great! So everything works as expected. In the following two videos, I hope, we are going to implement the biomes and the trees, or I think it might be a bit more than two videos, but basically, Last two steps that I want to implement is the biomes, so a, a different biome, a sand biome, and I want to place some trees on our world. Make sure that you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, it helps me a lot, and again, you can check out my video courses, the link will be in the description of the video. Okay, see you in the next video.